Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well out there. There's been some interesting news out of the IRS with some important implications for crypto holders around the world. Now, for context, on my previous videos about crypto taxation and crypto regulations, one of the most common comments that I got was about enforcement. For example, people asking how would the government know which crypto wallet is mine? And even if they were to find out, can I just say, whoops, I lost my private key? What are they going to do about it? Now, I've talked about the blockchain analysis software that the CRA says they use for forensic investigations into crypto. Things like chain analysis that work to identify who controls a wallet and look for suspicious flows of crypto. And another one, CypherTrace, similarly claims its algorithms help law enforcement de-anonymize crypto transactions. These tools could potentially identify which entity a wallet belongs to. But what would these tax and other government agencies ultimately do about it? Until this point, we didn't really hear anything that government agencies were doing to actually access the crypto wallets of individuals. Until now. So what happened? The IRS posted what's called an RFI, a request for information. Basically, in the world of government contracting, one of the first things that they can do is solicit responses from private companies to see the interest that exists in the industry and to also gauge what products, services, and technologies currently exist or are being worked on to solve the government's given problem. And so this solicitation from the IRS towards the industry is named Development of Exploitation Techniques Against Crypto Wallets. So you can take a guess what the problem is that the IRS is trying to solve. They say that their digital forensics unit routinely encounters crypto wallets subject to seizure and forfeiture. Though a few known cyber penetration testers have published vulnerabilities on specific devices, the process of decrypting the hardware devices to gain access to the wallets has been challenging. In support of IRS criminal investigations, further forensic research is needed to mature the process and obtain reliable results. Here's what keeps happening, apparently, for the IRS. In the routine course of their law enforcement activities, law enforcement organizations may receive hardware crypto wallets as evidence related to a case. If a subject fails to comply or is unavailable to aid, agencies may not be able to access the hardware crypto wallet. This may limit the options to investigate the movement of currencies across cryptographic currencies, as well as prevent the forfeiture and recovery of these assets in line with established federal guidelines. So they're essentially saying we find these suspects, we find their wallets where they have proceeds of crimes in them, but we can't get access to them. It's hard, which is the whole point of these wallets, of course. And note that the IRS is saying that we need to obtain reliable results, basically meaning we need to access any wallet that we seize. So here are the specific objectives that they're after. Validate cybersecurity research in cryptographic wallets exploitation. Identify new methods to gain access to cryptographic wallets. Identify successful cryptographic models exploits can be accomplished. Document the processes, hardware, and skill sets needed for reproduction in an advanced digital forensics laboratory. Create hands-on training for the identified techniques in support of IRSCI digital forensics laboratory. So obviously the big one there that would be concerning to regular everyday crypto wallet holders identify new methods to gain access to cryptographic wallets. And they go on to talk about the technical methods that they're interested in for accomplishing this, like software analysis, hardware reverse engineering, etc. And all of this for, quote, the express purpose of identifying consistent, repeatable exploitation techniques against a given device. Device here being, of course, crypto wallet hardware. So it's worth honing in on this notion they keep highlighting, that they are after consistent and repeatable techniques for accessing crypto wallets, not just one-off exploits that work against one type of wallet. And the reason that they want this standardization is obviously first that they want a reliable method to get data from any wallet that they come across in an investigation and not have to struggle to crack into each individual one, but also because then such a process would be defensible in court and trainable to digital forensic examiners. While this would of course make lives a lot easier for the IRS and their criminal investigations, it's also precisely what makes this request that they're asking for so difficult. As security researcher CyberGibbon says, hardware wallets are really getting quite secure now with a lot of research into them. You might be able to find issues in a few, but to have ready-made exploits to work against lots of them is going to be very hard. And even beyond just getting into the wallet, if the IRS is after the funds, the funds aren't actually on the wallet, just the keys. If the owner knows that they are attacking it and can act, the funds can be moved. So that's one thing to keep in mind here is that even if the IRS is doing this and looking to private firms to help improve its digital forensic capabilities against crypto wallets, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be successful in coming up with a consistent and repeatable technique. 
at least not necessarily in the short term. But let's just even look at this from the IRS's own perspective. Is this a good idea? It seems like overkill, Nicholas Weaver says, who is a senior researcher at the International Computer Science Institute at UC Berkeley. For most of these devices, a choice of either give us the password or rot in jail for contempt might be sufficient. Now, speaking personally, I don't know if that ultimatum would always be sufficient. I did a video previously on a story in Germany where a convicted hacker refused to give up his crypto wallet key that contained over 1,700 bitcoins, and he basically just served his time in prison and got out. The bitcoins were never recovered by police. Of course, how effective that ultimatum is will really depend on the laws in the country that it happens in. In Canada, you can serve up to 10 years in prison for not paying the proceeds of crime of over a million dollars, meaning the money earned from your illegal activity. So refusing to hand over your crypto wallet keys that contain more than a million dollars in market value could get you 10 years in jail, something that the German hacker, for example, didn't have to face. But this description of the search for reliable exploits of crypto wallets being overkill is worth assessing further, because if private companies contract with the IRS to provide them with such techniques, it would be naive to assume that law enforcement would be the only ones who would get them and use them. And so this whole thing could inadvertently open the door for facilitating theft and breaking into crypto wallets among private citizens. Anyway, going back to this IRS request for wallet exploits, I said in the beginning that this is not only relevant to Americans, because the IRS works closely on tax enforcement matters with Canada, the UK, Australia, and the Netherlands, through the J5 partnership, the Joint Chiefs of Global Tax Enforcement. Which is to say that if there is some breakthrough in digital forensics relating to crypto, we can expect a technology transfer between the tax authorities of these countries. On the other hand though, it's worth realizing that as these agencies are expanding their capabilities, the industry itself is also continuously advancing. Hardware wallets and other crypto-related technologies are being refined every day and becoming more secure. I think one good thing at the end of the day is that this, you know, game of cat and mouse is happening out in the open. So that if law enforcement authorities begin to successfully and consistently gain access to crypto wallets, you will find out about it. And I think inevitably in that situation, there will be further development and migration of users to alternative forms of storing their private keys. So I hope you found that interesting and I'm curious to know your thoughts on this development. As always, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and until next time.